travels fast here. I think when we were first starting, we were the third brewery like within the city limits. As of today, uh, we've been open for a little over two years. People told us when we found this location that, oh, you'll never survive, you'll never make it. But coming from New York, we're used to businesses being embedded in neighborhoods. You know, if you want to taste our beer, you actually have to come to Erie to get it. You can't find it anywhere else. You know, it's been a challenge, but you know, in all the best ways. What better way to decide whether or not we're going to make it work than to try it here? I really wanted to lean into helping our city to develop and grow. And we wanted to be at the ground level of that, so. That is probably what helped us gain a lot of momentum. And then, of course, in 2020, we have found ourselves in the middle of a pandemic, which I did not include in my business plan. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was scary. It was scary for everybody, you know, making decisions. You have no idea. Nobody's ever experienced anything like this before, so. I mean, the whole entire state shut down. Nothing like this has happened in the United States for over 100 years. That just lets you know the seriousness of what we were entertaining. That Monday morning, it was the day before St. Patrick's Day. It was kind of a shock, and we didn't quite know what to expect. Yeah, it was a little anxiety-ridden. You know, St. Patrick's Day is a huge day for, you know, restaurants, bars, everything, especially us, like an Irish-themed kind of craft brewery. We want people to come together and, and sit for a while, and that's just something that obviously we're not able to do right now. But I have always uh, sort of relied on uh, faith to keep me from losing my mind. I was just truly blown away on that first day, just, you know, how many people came in, regulars came in to order Rubens to go, and four packs, six packs of beer and things like that. So yeah, in the moment of just like, kind of like first couple weeks of, of it really really hitting eerie and the recognition that we are shutting down and I don't know how long this is going to, to be. You know, there's the reality of this might be the end of my business. Pennsylvania had a red, yellow, green system. There was no real metric that I ever was told of from the governor's office about what would take a county from red to yellow. You really do have to, you know, give the governor a little bit of credit for, you know, just standing his ground. Governor Wolf has done a great job with daily messages and direction on what to do about COVID-19. Every Friday they were announcing for the following Friday which counties would go from, you know, red to yellow or yellow to green. I believe that our state's response has been the appropriate response. I mean, we've had cases, but nothing compared to the overwhelming experience that a lot of the other states have had with the virus outbreak. That is a testament to not only the mandates that were put in place, but is also a testament to Pennsylvanians. You know, without getting too far into it, I don't think that we have an incredibly strong federal government right now. You've got somebody that is, that's, that's supposed to be the leader that just refuses to say, hey, okay, we're just gonna lock this down. That challenge has been that states have had to kind of make their own way through a pandemic. They said, wear the mask and we comply. We in Erie are settled very closely between New York and Ohio. At one point, Ohio was more locked down than Pennsylvania, so we had a lot of guests coming to cross the border. And so when there's different responses, then people really can just go somebody place else, whatever state is allowing the thing that they want to do. Because it's a worldwide pandemic, it doesn't mean that we were going to maybe extinguish it entirely. But if you look at the response that a lot of other countries have had, I mean, they got it under control almost immediately. Our main thing is we want to keep both our customers safe and our employees safe. Our food industry businesses, uh, because of the cap capacity restrictions, are still hurting because they're not able to generate the, the income that they're needing. That has been an interesting challenge, as it has been for every business, whether they're new or established. You know, Erie Insurance, of course, is Erie's largest employer now. With COVID-19, the vast majority of their employees are not downtown anymore. That's why a lot of restaurants and things downtown aren't, aren't even open. We don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if I just need to get through the next two weeks or the next two months or the next two years. You know, there was no unemployment assistant for the employees yet. We had no idea what to expect. Erie County does have a very good health department, with very good people there. So we rely a lot on them. It really just was about managing the moment that we were in 
and not doing anything that would overextend us. I think we handled it as calm and collectively as we could. We started doing a takeout window at the beginning of the pandemic, and then we decided to shut down for two weeks um, and do delivery to people's houses only. That was a big challenge. We don't have the infrastructure for delivery or, or online ordering. We had to switch a lot of our production schedule around to can and bottle a lot of beer because the draft sales were going to go through the floor overnight. Based on the fact that we had a skeletal crew here, it was just enough to keep us treading water. Several weeks we did uh, lay off our almost our entire workforce. It was myself and one other employee. Obviously, you weren't going to be able to staff it the same way. The reality of having to tell people that rely on the in their income from my business that like they no longer have a job with me was horrible. It's not an easy time for anybody. We're lucky here because we have a huge outdoor parking lot, so we've transitioned that into an open air beer garden. And because the weather changed, that just means that the seats that were outside are now inside. How are we gonna serve people food and pints of beer outside in notorious eerie weather? Uh, Hopefully we don't get the seven feet of snow again like we did a couple years ago. But We have businesses that are only operating within the summertime, and they have that small window to be able to capture their financial well-being for the year. Collect all that revenue and then squirrel it away and survive through the winter. It is too hard to look that far ahead. So Erie is a very resilient town, and I know that our businesses are very creative and able to pivot on the fly to be able to meet the needs of their, of their community. And I am willing to go on the safe side to keep people safe versus opening my business back up. Obviously, 50%, 25% is not considered optimal for any food service establishment, but something's better than nothing. I've you know, made it my mission to make sure that I'm shopping small business um, and going to our small business restaurants. When the locals recognize that you know they can do stuff that can be helpful to local establishments, they show up. I think we just kind of have to live with what we have here currently in terms of wearing the mask, keeping social distance. So it's just doing the best we can with the information that we have today. I think that this is just going to be another thing that we've seen that Erie is is able to, to get over. But I think we're realizing like this really has very, has lasting consequences, both from a, a physical virus standpoint, but also from the way that we do business and the way that our cities are set up. I think that this uh, pandemic has given people an opportunity to look inward. I am hoping that people are a little bit more conscious. I'm hoping that people are a little bit kinder and a little bit mindful of the fact that everybody doesn't have the same experience. You know, our, our mission was to create a space for people to connect, collaborate, share ideas. So how do we facilitate those conversations that are so vital to what's happening outside of our doors and the growth of our city? How do we continue to help facilitate those without being able to be that physical space? I understand it's hard for our small businesses right now, but we have seen, you know, hard times before, and we're really excited to, to see, you know, where we're, we're going to be able to go through that and to make sure that we can pull all businesses through, you know, this tough time as well.